itu mana ya tu yang kau nanti sih saya objek tu sih ni riba pinjam ke alam ni 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 in this revolution today topic that we have in this conversation it's with the title let's rise let's stand up for our new futures decision so with this topic we will talk about the dynamic of the military the changing context of the military these days there are lots of defectors from the military there are even a whole platoon defecting in this revolution and we have the speakers with us today and on top of that we would like to welcome all our audience joining with us for your conversation and for your messages if you have any particular to the soldiers of the military there is zoom link in the facebook and there is comment box in this zoom so by the middle of our conversation i will give a floor to our audience to vote out your messages to the soldiers of the military uh, but before that i would like to invite our speakers we have Bedo Tuso. Bedo Tuso is from the Guyan National Union. And Bedo Tuso, can you please introduce yourself? Thank you very much. Thank you. I am Bedo Tuso. I am from Guyan National Union. And I am the permanent committee member of the KNU. For the KNU, we have political um, discussion. I particularly involved in KNU's uh, political activities, um, specifically transitional justice um, measures. I am also the member and representative of the KNU's representing in national unity consultative councils transitional justice okay. uh, working group so i am very glad that i am here with all of you today in this thought process program thank you next i would like to invite miss spring from the people soldiers wife organization thank you my name is Miss Spring. I am from Soldiers People Wives Organization, and I am also a member of the Badaupu Organization. So basically, our organization is supporting the wives, families of the people's soldiers in this revolution. Thank you very much for your introduction. And I also would like to invite last speaker, who is the member of the People's Goal Korea. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. I am a CDMR. I was ex military personnel. Currently, I am working as a member of the People's Goal in supporting the defectors. The one. On top of that, I also um, involved in activities to combat the propaganda of the military over the soldiers so that the soldier will understand the clear situation, the reality, and to defect with us. 
and we believe that the role of the defectors are very important to have a successful revolution and really to end this brutality. Thank you. And thank you very much for your introduction. Now let's um, start our conversation. We have three parts in this evening. The first part um, will be about the uh, panel discussion and then after that we will have the question and answer session and we will also have the final wrapping up parts in this evening as well so for the first part we will have the round of conversation for this i would like to invite Bedo Tuso. can you please um, share your opinion regarding the current context, the current dynamic, particularly the military um, dynamic, the military situation. And can you please um, share your opinion regarding their situation, the, their current situation now? And you may also contrast the current situation with their dynamic in the past as well. Thank you. Okay. I address myself as Ya, which is the I, me, my mind in current language. So allow me to address myself as Ya in Korean language. Because the Myanmar language I has the direct literal translation as slave so i do not want to use the burmese um, word i whenever i refer to myself as i i don't want to use the burmese um, language i because the burmese language i has the meaning of slave so I would like to call myself, address myself uh, as I in Korean language because no one is slave in here, right? So talking about this, the military is now receiving its bad deed back from the wrong that they committed against the public. The public is heavily angry with the military. In any perspective, the military is at its downfall. The situation is completely different from that of the time in 1988. In 1988, the military then was very resilient uh, but we have the technology um, we live in an in informative um, world we live in the digitalized era so the military now cannot catch up to this world but the public are already very much advanced in this um, era. We have this Operation 1027. Operation 1027 attacks the military in comprehensive manner. The coordinated military operation is imposed against the military the mentality of the military it's very down this is the reality the morality of the military it's at its lowest the whole platoon def uh, it, it's finding the public the whole unit is defecting and the whole unit is joining 
with the public, the whole unit, surrender their weapons at the PDF, at the ethnic armed organization. They know, the military knows, the soldiers know that the public is not with them. The public does not um, support them. So it is the time now that the soldier should earn the trust of a public. How to do so? They have to join their hands with the public by leaving the military rather than supporting the unfair, unjust system. The soldier really need to leave the bad institution. The soldier should understand that it is the time now that they have to fix the bad name of the military by leaving that institution without joining with the public, without reforming themselves, without restoring their dignity by stopping the brutality, then there is no way out for the military. So please surrender all of your weapons and please join with the PDF. Please join with the revolution. Only then system changed might be there and the future of the soldier the future of the of the um, leader of of the soldiers can be there only if they leave the military so this is something that i would like to say the revolutionary organization are there the PDF, the revolutionary organizations here, the PDF is here, the people is here for all of you, for all of the soldier that to join with us. So only then your future will be there. Only then the revolution will be ended. So this is something that I would like to say. And um, thank you very much, Bado. You talked about that. Uh, the military is hated. Um, so much by the people. The people are angry with them. So the future for the soldier um, can be assured, can be only if they leave the military and joining the um, revolutionary organization and the people. So this is something that I um, learned from your conversation. Now, I would like to um, invite uh, Miss Spring um, can you please share with us about the the, the voices of the yeah. wives and family members of a soldier within the military camps? Thank you. Well, what I would like to say is that even before coup, there are many soldiers who wanted to um, leave the military for their um, general hardship um, but then again I mean there are the soldiers and the families who believe that um, they belong to the military and um, of course after the coup the um, leaders of the military ask them to commit all sort of wrongdoing um, towards the public, they those who could not stand such kind of brutality uh, left the military and joining to the um, defecting program. But then there are many soldiers who are giving wrong situation, uh, oh, sorry, wrong information, propaganda information by the military itself to, to 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 be with the military still so those who are with the military are very much confused of um, I mean, on what they are doing and why they have to be in the front line so that's why 
from time to time, uh, and 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 from all the time, they feel very much depressed at their front line, and for the wives, family. Um, who were left at the uh, at the uh, military camp did not uh, do not have enough communication with their with their um, with, I mean with their husband with their sons um, who are at the front line. So basically, with all this blackout of information, with all this misinformation, disinformation by the military. Um, uh, 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 towards their own soldier and their own um, soldier's family, um, they did not have much understanding on what's going on. So on top of that, the children of the soldiers and the wives of the soldiers, the family members of the soldiers, are uh, asked to have the para uh, military activities such as um, such as uh, 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 watching the uh, uh, military uh, post, the military um, barri barricades, and etc. etc. So the thing is that these days, since the military operation is intensified. There are many incidents that yeah, they are the bombs, that, 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 that there are bombardments by the drones. So they are very much terrified whenever that there will be drones, I mean, over their heads. And at the same time, the leaders of the uh, soldiers are very much superstitious. So the wives and family members are asked to do all sort of regular ritual um they were not sure about it as well why they have to do this kind of religious rituals and everything and now what happened is that whenever there was a particular uh, incident that the soldiers uh, died in the military operation they are asked to post all the um all all all, all the songs and all the um happy and merry uh, media contents in the social media as if that everything is all doing fine and everything is all happily i mean uh, 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 living so i think they are now facing all sort of difficulties to live in the military camp. Living in the military camp, it's completely, I mean, um, separate. And majority of the uh, family of the soldier really know that they have no future. So we receive quite a lot of contact from the um, military that they would like to um, do the defection. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your uh, your opinion and, and, and information with us. As you say that soldiers are not sure and very frustrated regarding why they are fighting, um, why they are fighting for. And there are all sorts of misinformation, disinformation and information blackout of soldiers and over their families as well. And there are all sorts of ridiculous uh, religious ritual that the family members of the soldiers ask and everyone is also confused so this is something that we've learned from your point and konong you i would like to invite you what did you see as a change after the operation 1027 can you also um, share with us regarding the dynamic of the defection thank you After one zero operation one zero two seven, we have seen the changes are more visible even before the operation 
1027, we are seeing the, the military weakening steadily internally as well, because uh, with the operation of Sudan, military cannot run offensive. They are in the defense now. They are very defensive. So it has made it very clear after Operation 1027 and that, uh, you know, that uh, they have, uh, that although they have airstrikes and artillery to rely on, but even that they can recuperate and that in military, that's also is very clear. One thing I can point out is that uh, the military, the SAC forces, do not uh, repress. Do not repress, and the people do not protect the people. They are fighting against the people. And when you have a military institution like uh, Tamaro, who is there, who is fighting against the people, they will in that that uh, interdominated. They uh, inevitably they will fail. The longer it takes, the revolutionary forces are stronger. They are more united. They are more systematic. They are more structured. So when they are f fighting against the people, if they are considering the people of Myanmar as their enemy, it will be harder for them. The longer it takes, it will be harder for them to concentrate. It will be harder for them to to uh, mobilize. And, uh, that to the extent that uh, they are like, um, if you look at the military speaking, that uh, KNDF, had, for example, like uh, the way KNDF has captured and that uh, received the surrender of the uh, of the um, of the regiments in the base in the Loikho University, for example, with the KNDF as well as on other POWs that have been. So it shows clearly that in Loikho, like uh, you know that. We we have seen uh, they they have uh, soldiers. They have been a uh, hundred or fifteen or hundred or eighteen were killed. And uh, like uh, you know, two thirds of the soldiers were either injured or killed, and that only a third remains. And that those who remain are in horrible situation as well. So the, if we look at the military um, military casualties and loss, it has been it has increased. Before the military has if has, has losses, but uh, they were able to run the offensive. This they they might think that they still have a chance to win the war. But as uh, Rodrigo had um, explained uh, also that uh, when the military is fighting against the people, so they are facing more losses, that they are more facing more um, than militarily as well, because they are fighting against the people. So it, it is very demanding psychologically as well as physically to continue the fighting as well. Like, uh, you know, I think uh, when you look at the soft power and both hard power, they don't get the support of the people, they don't have the trust of the people, they are going against the grain, against the people. So psychologically as well as Morally, but the military is on that uh, you know deteriorating. So when they are facing that uh, in the in the battle, also that also have an impact as well. So after the operation ten twenty seven. What we can, what the, the what the military, what the troops, SSC troops has realized is that, uh, you know, they do not have the, you know, they cannot, they, they cannot, uh, they cannot fight against the revolutionary forces, and that they are not doing managing well in the on the battleground, and it's better for them to surrender, and that, and also they, I think it is important for them to question why is this war happening, why is this fighting happening? This is happening because the military leaders wants to consolidate their power with the wars of the whole onto the. Power. Power. In a way, they start. They must. They need to understand and realize that they are fighting for the greed, for power of the military leaders, and that they are fighting against that uh, the people. So I think uh, that that realization will make them wanting to surrender and join the people's uh, people whenever they can as well. We have seen uh, that even re that about three regiments, entire regiments have uh, surrendered and joined the people. We have one in the northern Shan. You know, the entire regiment has. Uh, surrendered as well and that also shows that uh, that defeat or that uh, the lose inside of the SAC and that also shows the fractures and the tensions inside the military as well and that it, moreover that that uh, that uh, for the for the soldiers of the SAC, I think it also reflect that they are starting to see the truth. They know that um, you know that they are waiting for an opportunity, and whenever there is opportunity, they would grab the opportunity to surrender or to join as well. Because for them, is that they are they do not consider that as like a surrendering to the enemy. That uh, they are surrendering to the people because they are fighting with the people. They are fighting against the people. That uh, for them is uh, stopping. It's not a surrender, it's to stop fighting the people and joining the people's side. I'm sure those who surrender or those who join the people's side, they have a lot to think about. But the way they are thinking is that I think it is also understanding it is not just surrendering their weapons, it is more also 
of fighting against the people and try to join the well of the people. And that, that also is uh, shown by the, the fact that re entire regiments have uh, joined the side as well. Northern Shan State is very visible because there is a lot of fighting as well. And that um, there is also the different um, allied uh, revolutionary and revolutionary forces are fighting against the SEC. So that uh, the battles in the Northern Shan are quite visible. And that also is that these such messages also have, uh, you know, spread in the inside the military as well, that we are fighting, not the just war, and that uh, we should not be making such sacrifices. And that uh, whenever we are engaging with the revolutionary forces, we do not have the ability militarily to defend ourselves or to, to counter the attack and that time um, you know that uh, it is um, that time um, you know it is important whenever we cannot uh, you know we cannot defend ourselves we cannot fight back against them it is better to you know that um, it is better to give up and it's better to join the people's side that's also a sort of like um, the narrative that we are hearing inside the military so that uh, military leaders will remain stubborn but my message to the soldiers uh, in the SAC is that this is a very important time it is important to think about your own future. It is important to think about your family's future. It is important to build your future as well. That uh, SEC is that, uh, you know, in a way, SEC is uh, sacrificing your life, your the, your future for their power. And for what reason? That uh, will you be, how you know, will you be allowed, will you allow the military to exploit you and then, uh, you know, kill them and get to, you know, die with dignity on the ground for those. It is important to get yourself free from that uh, from the exploitation it is important to think about the future your future or that of your family and that uh, whenever your your military bases are facing uh, that uh, revolutionary forces it is important to think about doing the right thing and also to stop fighting as well because if when you surrender to the re revolutionary forces it is not you're not surrendering to the enemy but you're making the hard but very difficult but decision to stand for the people i think it is important to be prepare for that and it is also important to make such a decision when you have an opportunity to do so that's what i would like to share thank you very much thank you Gunayu, for a very comprehensive analysis of the current situation on the ground so i think uh, it is yeah, you know, there there is a need to have more defectors as well as on the more people to join the CDM as well. I will be asking another round of question to our speakers. Then I will also give a chance for the participants, uh, other listeners and the attendees to ask the question. So either if you have a question or some a comment you want to make or the message you want to give to the people soldiers or to the soldiers as they see, please feel free to uh, participate. If you are in the Zoom already, just raise your hand. We'll be calling your name. Or you can also type the questions in the Q and A, or the chat as well. So, now I would like to invite Pro to so once again that, uh, so you have share in that about it as well, and that, uh, and and also uh, that, uh, you, that 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 here you have seen uh, uh, that we have seen that there has been a lot of changes happening as well. That uh, you look at the current situation, uh, there has been more desert desertion as well as on the defection as well. So what is can you policy towards the defectors and those uh, deserters as well as those who surrender? What is your can you uh, position policy and that what kind of uh, preparation has can you uh, done for the to uh, to receive the deserters? or the the, the the factors looking at the current situation um that um, you know when it comes to uh when it comes to the fight, fight the fighting ongoing fighting I think it is also important to look at, uh, we, I would like to say that military and politics are interconnected. That's the first point I would like to make. So now that uh, there are re revolutionary ethnic revolution forces or ethnic or the other revolution forces are waging war as well. So can you, Korean National Union has, uh, when we have the political strategy that goes into political concept that go into the fighting, because whenever people say, oh, they are fighting, we, when that tough, that the, the nature of the war is uh, is not about targeting individuals, but our fighting, our battle, our struggle is about changing a system, and that's why we are fighting this this war that we are in this struggle in our fight that whenever we are going to capture an enemy camp 
then it is important to give them an exit point. We get, always give them an exit so that they can leave. So whenever we fight, our strategy and tactics will allow them a, an outlet so that they can peacefully uh, leave as well. Politically speaking, the message we like to give to SAC is that uh, according to the political ideology, we are we are in this struggle and we also fight militarily, but we give them a political outlet to the same as we leave them military outlet that time. Uh, but for us, that uh, if there are rank and file or the you know leaders, commanders, commanders, and that uh, who do not want to to serve, serve under the dictatorship, who do not want to serve under the you know such a dictatorial military leaders, they have a way out. They have an exit, like just like in the political struggle as well. If they also, uh, no, if they also want to oppose the military dictators, they don't want to follow the orders of the military dictators. If they want to leave, then if you are, if you are in the can you can you uh, current national union territory, then we have a we have the humanitarian treatment from us. We will treat you with as a human being because uh, I'm sure you have seen videos in the YouTube. You're also seen on the Facebook as well. We do not torture them. We do not uh, harm them we in fact uh, we treat them with humanitarianism that uh, if they are injured or if they are not uh, healthy then we provide them with the health and health care as well so this is how we treat those uh, soldiers as well it is not just in uh, current uh, current current national union territory if you go to the current state it will be the same in the current state i'm sure people have seen what is happening in the current state area even some of the family members of the soldiers will have realized that how the you know these revolutionary forces are treating the soldiers as they see if you look at the northern um if, if you look at there for the three uh, northern alliance uh, that uh, you know the entire regiment has surrendered including their families and that uh, you know how they have been treated you will see then as well we wage war we wage battle it's not about killing others it's not about uh, you know killing as many as we can from the enemy our goal is to change the system we want to reform a system we need to change a system and that's the reason for us in waging the war so we don't want to kill people if they want to if they want to give up if they want to surrender if they want to change that if they want to desert if they want to defend if they want to you know walk with the can if they want to walk with a pdf that is an opportunity they can seize and they have that opportunity if they are in the territories of the can then basically i would say that uh, we'll give them with the basic uh, needs that uh, they will have a basic safety they will be you know they will be treated with human dignity they they would have the basic they will be able to have uh, food and then to a uh, place to stay and to live so that if they want to join the revolution if they want to you know join with the knu then if they want to join in our struggle to fight against uh, and fair system they want to oppose and they want to fight back against some military dictators then we will of course uh, after the after the dress building, after the assessment, they will be able to join in our struggle, in our revolution as well. So these are, we have a policy, such a policy, and that's what we are implementing on the ground as well. So, so that uh, for the, if you are in, um, you know, that um, territories, which are, either under the Kenya territory or adjacent to the Kranny territory. And if you want to join, if you want to defect, if you want to join the people, if you want to join the Kianali, there is an opportunity for them to do so. And that if you simply want to surrender and just stop fighting for the military, they can do that too. The doors is open. We always welcome any defectors or deserters, or if they want to just simply quit, they can't. We treat them with humanity. We treat them with humanitarianism. That's the first point I would like to make to all those who come. So that will be my response. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Pudu, for the the point you have raised. So can, can you uh, have explained that that in waging war, can you always uh, uh, accompany with a political concept and that you always welcome the defectors and deserters? And this is something we always discuss, that uh, can you always have a strong policy towards it as well, that can you, uh, consider, can you provide the basic, uh, that dignified treatment uh, for the defectors and deserters? And that then also we have heard about it. We have also have seen that can you is doing in such a way on the ground too. 
you. So thank you for your response. Now I would like to invite Spring once again. So Spring, you have said earlier that the families, uh, you know, that are living on the bases and that uh, the, fi the wives and families of the soldiers, they are depressed and often they do not have access to information. They do not have uh, contact with their husbands or the family members. In that case, how can we mobilize them? How can we reach out to them? How can we give message to them on what they should do, what they should be thinking? So what the revolutionary forces should be doing towards this family? How do we mobilize them? How do we effectively you know, reach out to them to mobilize them so that uh, they can, uh, you know, do the military work. So, can you share your opinion on that? For me, that um, I, when I since the time I started working on the defection, I think it is important we have always uh, mobilized the women. So, okay, women as well. So, for a soldier. A soldier is, if he wants to defect, then um, he, if he has married and if he has a family, he is the head of the family. So he, whatever decision he makes will have an impact, not only on him, but also on his family too. So that uh, for them, and it is, uh, if he wants to make a decision to defect, he has to think about his family. So if he, you know, defects, uh, what will happen to his family? Will his family be able to survive? If he can, you know, even if he can uh, take the, you know, he can take the trouble, he can live through the dif difficulty, but he, they may be very concerned about their wives and also for their children, particularly if they are young. If the wives, their wives themselves will say, that's fine, go just defect and I will support you and I will accompany you and I can uh, live through the hardship with you, then if the, with the encouragement of his wife, he will, uh, it will be easier for him to, you know, leave the judgment of military. It will be easier for him to make such a decision to defend as well. So that's, that's the reason why we have consistently mobilized the, the wives or the family members of the soldiers, because the, uh, a soldier's wife, uh, the spouse, uh, the spouses can always, uh, the, if they, she will like uh, prohibit them, she will also stop them from doing the wrong thing. And then as well as on, if she can also encourage him to choose the right, right way and do the right thing. And then if the families were to say, no, you cannot do such act like that, then the, the soldiers will be will think twice before committing the atrocities against the people of Myanmar the way they have done so as well. And if the, the wives are they focusing more on the what they can gain from the husband's position or the husband walk and then if they are very much you know happy with what they gain and that um even if they, the the man the husband wants to leave and they want to you know that to stop the following that uh, horrible orders but then the, the wife could be pressuring him to just stay inside the military so that she can just live in luxury and she can to be able to get a benefit from it as well a wife can do a lot to strengthen or weaken the decision of the man as well when we look at the CDMRs also, there has been a few CDMRs when say that, well, like, like the wife say refused to come and then she want, wants to come back. So those has to come, come as well. And then those when they came back, there were also there were also officers who the wife would refuse to come. So he has to go back and then he was killed by the military. We have such horrible, horrible stories too as well. Now is the right time. I think it is important the wives of the, the, both the rank and file as well as one officer need to understand now is the right time to do the right thing as well. It is important for not only for the revolution, but also for their own personal safety as well, that it could also be their less opportunity to join as well. So don't wait until it's too late and regret not missing that opportunity as well. That for women of always have a, you know, ability that uh, often women have ability to thinking, but sometimes some of the women might not be thinking deeply, but I think it is important for the women to think, you be clever and make the right decision to encourage the husband so that you can make the they can do the right thing for their family as well. There are also the families who are preparing to leave the military. They were they are you know trying to prepare, but that be I would like to encourage them to just make the decision, just leave already. Because if you are you know, but that you know if you are gonna just say, oh well that um, 
you don't get much support and then uh, you don't get much 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 much, much uh, you know support from that it is wrong that there is always support because when you uh, surrender or when you defect you are treated with the, the human rights standards and that you'll be treated with humanity that the humanitarianism as well that uh, you know that because of the um there are also some of the cdm soldiers who are also right now even fighting back against the against the military as well and that they, they can do that because of the support of their families and that's also means how important mobilizing the women in on the military bases are and when we do that mobilizing there are also two things that you need to do systematically one is that the, the families of the soldiers who are on the front lines or who are in um you know who are in the regiments they need to have a access to information that it is also important to give a message effectively so that they can counter the being the propaganda and the brainwash material of the military as so a one I think it is also important for the short for, for the short term. It is important to have arrangements to to support their families and the CDM or CDM soldiers as well. And that most of the soldiers have that you know they have they are career soldiers. They have always walk and live inside the military. So when they be when they become defectors and they are very they are very concerned that they might not know how to have a livelihood as well. So it is also important to uh, you know give them opportunity uh, to livelihood that is also to give them message about the livelihood opportunities how they can get uh, for uh, to training and vocational training to be able to do so the survivors support themselves as well that will also get that will also help them make the decision there are also a lot of soldiers who are still quite reluctant to make the decision because they are concerned about their family if they know better that their family will they for the short term they will have the support for food and other basic needs and they will also get vocational support so that they can find a way to walk and live and that will be that will also help them and then it is also important to explain to them that no that they will not be killed by the um the revolutionary forces for because they they surrender or because they defect and that they have opportunity to survive they can also you know start their own business to be able to to uh you know survive and support their family so it is important to give such message messages thank you spring for uh your contribution what I understood from you is that there are two parts to this as well. It is also important to give a information campaign so that they, so that the soldiers or those who are in service will know what will happen once they defect. It is also important to provide them some support once they defect, and that will with this kind of support there will there will also be more defection. That defection will be good. So now I would like to invite Kunao Yu. That uh, Kuna, after Kunao Yu stand, then we'll also like to give a chance to the our Attendee. So if you have any questions, if you are on Facebook and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to join us on the Zoom or if you're already in the Zoom and if you have a question, please uh, raise your hand using the um, that raise hand fashion as well. So Kuna Yu, I have two questions for you. First question is that uh, so right now the military is facing a lot of challenges and difficulties so there is also issue the trust is also eroded inside the military there is issue of uh, that military does not trust the soldiers either so what kind of uh, that what kind of uh, tactics or the military could start using in such a situation because of the because of the the hardship that we are facing right now and second point is that uh, and what so what how should what should the revolutionary forces think about and prepare for you know to be able to have better mobilization or better preparation what should the revolutionary forces be looking at or thinking about or doing in um in in, in preparation for such tactic well what i would like to say is that now the crack in the military is rather obvious in the past there were only a few soldiers defecting but now we have a whole troop um, defecting um, this is the biggest and the worst nightmare of a, uh, having the internal um, crack is the worst thing for the military so that's why the um, psychology impact is rather um, on the military. They are depressed. 
and their morale is very low. Um, in the past, their morale was very high, saying that they are the savior and protector of the religion and the country and the nation. But this does not work. This kind of message does not work at all. In order to have the internal um, organizing drive, the military is using all sort of propaganda, all sort of misinformation, disinformation, and they had all sort of um, absurd remedy, um, such as donation, uh, 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 food distribution, entertainment program by the entertainer. But all of these will not work, and it does, and it, and 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 they don't work. Simply, the thing is that. Um, they uh, really um, want to have their soldiers um, fighting for them, so that's why um, they, 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 they distort and all the information, they came up with all the misinformation, disinformation, yeah. such as the ethnic uh, organizations, uh, uh, member kill the military, etc., etc., again they don't work all of these messages don't work and revolutionary forces counter act all this propaganda of a military so the uh, revolutionary media outlets uh, came up with all the facts and figures uh, really to communicate to the soldiers that only the military is doing the propaganda, but whereas the revolutionary media outlets came up with all the uh, facts and figures. So basically, now the military also says that, well, the revolutionary media outlets are all sham, all fake and everything what up, with all their propaganda. So there are all sort of... Uh, 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 media war at the same time between the uh, military media outlet and the revolutionary media outlet. But the reality cannot hide. The reality, the reality is something that the soldiers themselves feel it, experience it, witness it. So they all realize that the propaganda of the military is all sham, all fake. Nothing's true. But of course, propaganda of a military uh, might have their intended impact. But their intended impact of their propaganda is very, very low, I would say. So basically, what happened is that the military propaganda simply um, doesn't work over the uh, public. Um, but we really have to be careful that the military has a very wicked propaganda and old strategy and tactics uh, that they will make the ethnic organizations confused among themselves with their uh, wrong information. We should not be fooled by the uh, military messages. But the thing is that People, the public, are advanced. People live in today's world, and all the revolutionary forces live in today's world. But the military leaders do not live in today's world. They are left behind in terms of technology, in terms of ideology, in terms of the way that they see the mankind. So, the thing is that with all their old mind, old tactics, old wicked scheme. They played their dirty games, but simply they don't walk on the people. So anyway, the soldiers, I mean, you have to realize what you need to decide. You need to, you know what's going on. You know how you experience, you know that your leaders are telling all the lies. So please be alerted. Please be aware that what is going on. So basically, um, just, 
um, will be uh, soldiers are brainwashed, soldiers are provided all the wrong information, uh, but soldiers know the reality. Soldier know um, and 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 in contact with the people. So it's very important for all of you that you reflect yourself on the reality and we on the other hand try to provide the real information the realistic information of a ground um, to the soldiers and to the family of the soldiers so soldiers you really need to be aware of the reality and i also would like to encourage each and every one of the public member to join our hands to show the real world for the soldiers because the thing is that nobody should not be fooled by all this wicked remedies of the military leaders military holder only then the soldiers will be defecting with us so this is my overall message to everyone thank you Thank you very much, Gunanyu, for your contribution. What I learned is that the military will use their same old, brand new military wicked tactics, uh, and 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 they will fool us. They will fool their soldiers. But then again, the real information shall never be um, high. So everyone needs to join our hands to make sure that the soldiers know the reality. This is something that I learned from you. Again, I would like to give the floor to our audience for sharing your message, if any, to the soldier of the military. Godeza, you raise your hand. Please take the floor. Kutiza, you may have your microphone on and discuss. Thank you. I hope that you can hear your voice. Yes, we can hear your voice. What I would like to discuss is about this Operation 1027. Um, since the start of the Operation 1027, the whole platoon defecting, the whole unit defecting, it's happening so this is expected actually we will have more of this um, situation uh, in coming days as well and this means that we need to make sure that it is our responsibility um, that we take care of the defectors we accommodate them we look after them so it is the responsibilities of all the supporting organization to them. So I would like to raise my question that do uh, does NUG has any plan to address this situation? Or I mean, I'm wondering if the response to the defectors are uh, based on ad hoc activities program of all the various organizations. So I kind of wonder what would be what can be, I mean what can we see? What can what can happen? Do does NUG has a plan? Thank you. Konongyo, can you please um, uh, uh, respond to this? Thank you. Uh, well. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, that there are two, uh, two, two units in Northern Shan State defecting, and in Karani area, the whole unit um, defecting. Uh, uh, and um, what I would like to say is that already at the very beginning of the um, revolution, the ethnic organization, revolutionary organizations such as KNU took care of uh, the defectors on their own as well. And the thing is that 
joining their hands, uh, the uh, soldiers joining their hands with the public, defecting uh, in, 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 with the um, with, with 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 the revolution and leaving the military is the safest um, life for them. Um, now, situation is very complex and things are rather complicated these days. There can be a level of risk to do defection, but that defection risk that they may encounter it's far safer than to live under the military regime. This is something that I would like to say. So my point is that the ethnic revolutionary organizations uh, uh, have capacity, techniques, policy to accept the defectors they are doing their best. So this is something that I can say right this moment. Thank you. And now I would like to invite Pedro Tuso if you have any point based on what Koteza mentioned. Joining the public, taking the refuge of the um, public guidance, defecting, joining the people embrace program. Uh, the synonym in our life, the defection in our revolution. For in you, we have our uh, our, our standpoints, support. Uh, Consistent to the defectors with our utmost capacity, we work together with NUG as much as we can for the uh, defector management. There are measures, there are programs, there are provisions, there are contributions for the defectors so that they will enjoy their own human dignity, human rights, and human integrity. And the thing is that it is very important that we need to do this kind of uh, 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 work in coordination, in collaboration. Now we are talking about defection. Defection is about leaving the wrong institution, changing the system. So it is the individual decision whether they will join with the righteousness or stay with the wrong. Yeah. So it is the individual decision whether to do the defections or not. If they made the decision that they will leave the wrong and join with the righteousness, then we as KNU thousands and tens of thousands of defectors within our own capacity and we also coordinate uh, with the other organization for the defectors and there are also opportunities that we can do more for the defection in the future but what I would like to appeal to the public, what I would like to request to the public is that the public play a very critical role in defection dynamic. What I mean by that is that if any individual, if any um, soldiers, if any policemen who want to defect, please help them. The thing is that we are talking about the new future. The new future is the future of all of us. The new future is the future in which we have to live together. 
This is the responsibility of each and every one of us to pave, to shape the new future that we want. Now, my message to the public is that please help the defense by any means that you can. Now, what I want to say to the soldier, to the policeman is that you really is the wrong and what is the right and you know that the system that you serve is a wrong one the war crime or continue serving that wrong system or whether you join with the right side which is to protect the people and we at the same time are now preparing all the cases and all the necessary measures with all the necessary activity that we would be able to seek the justice through international justice system by prosecuting the military hunter under the war crimes legal framework so, if when the time that your boss, your leader, is prosecuted in the international justice system with a war crime, your system that the your wrong system that you are serving, the wrong boss that you are serving, will not protect you, and your situation then will 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 get worse than you are having now you are now serving the war criminal whether you will continue serving the war criminals or you will join the right side then it is up to you to make what is the decision for you this is my message to the soldier and please thank you now we hear that this is a time for the soldier to think. This is a time for the policeman to think what to do. Well, I'm sorry that uh, we cannot hear the facilitators very well. Sorry about that. Uh, my, my, the moderator was having internet connectivity issues. So I would like to read a question that, uh, you know, when there is a war, uh, that, uh, you know, the human resources, uh, weapons, ammunition, and supplies are very important. So the fighters are most important. Now that the SAC is facing a lot of losses and injuries, so how do you think the SAC will try to recruit? Is rank and file. So that's the question we have received in the chat on the Zoom. And apologies, uh, we cannot hear the moderator anymore, hoping he will be able to connect with better connection. So thank you for bearing with us. So Kunayu, can you take this question in the chat? Uh, about how will the military try to recruit 
so I know that your your audio is also a little bit choppy. So thank you. I will I can take the question in the chat box. The chat box question is that uh, military is has a lot of losses as well as some injuries. Uh, so how can they recruit to gain more men manpower? That uh, in terms of recruitment and then uh, and logistics, there are two parts. So they have uh, forces which are not uh, which are not uh, in uh, front which are not fighting, such as they can use uh, southern Chen. They can also use also that's from the ARE region as well, but that they are also limited because they are also using different means to get new recruitment as well. That's just what we know because in the central part of Myanmar, because of without the lack of the rule of with the with the lack of the rule of law, they are using any means possible that uh, that as well. That for example, like if the police arrest a young men or the people, then the military will go there and then say, well, do you want to go to jail or do you want to serve? And then um, sometimes that's the option. So they would threaten people to join the military at all costs. They will, so that is what they are doing as well. Another is they are also trying to uh, promise a lot of uh, job opportunities. They will say like, okay, you're going to get this job or you're going to get this position. And then they were also like recruiting uh, different ways as well, offering um, that careers as well as on the different races. So on the um, military lobby pages, we are also seeing they are trying to recruit as much as possible as well. They are using different ways to threaten and to force them as well. They are also going to some of the areas. Uh, ARWD, we see in that ARWD because there is no there isn't much ARWD. So we are in the villages, they are trying to go to the community and through the local authorities, they are trying to recruit uh, that uh, but recruit a new uh, that uh, you know um, new soldiers as well that are in the recruitment they do whatever they can to get to numbers as well, to get numbers. So for example like in ARWD area they will go to the different villages and then they would uh, mobilized they were organized by making different promises as well they will also make a falsify that uh, job offers then they will call people to say you got a job offer to work in this area that area and then in reality these people once they sign up for the job and they will be taken to the military and then force them to recruit them as well and those who are being arrested and detained they will also be given an option of do you want to go to jail or do you want to go to the military so join the military this is what we have seen is what well, that uh, and that time so uh, this is what they have been doing steadily since 2022. And then also with the escalation of the fighting, they are doing doing more such a forceful recruitment as well. And that uh, people, I think we are also, it is also important to raise the awareness of the people about this so the people will not be, you know, exploited by the military in such a forced recruitment practices. I think it is also, I would also like to give the message to the people because the military is using whatever means possible to recruit more and more and that uh, I think it is important for the people to be aware about it as well and also for the young young people also be be careful about the military using a force recruitment tactics in their areas that's the message i would like to give thank you who oh, now you for your answer I would also like to ask her participants if you have any questions or comments, please raise the hand. So there is also another question we have received in the Q and A. So that it's not just that you no know, everybody must uh, all the civil servants must join the CDM, not those under the Ministry of Home Affairs. If you do not join the CDM, then they are they should be taken action. They should be taken action by the by the by the state treason law because they were they are they are in a, going against the world of the people. Spring, what do you think? Well, about the CDM and the, all the, the question, I, if I understood the qu question correctly, is that there should be no CDM should be punished. I think it is not just for the military or the police and the, all the civil servants that need to, all the servers need to join the side of the people and that no CDM should be punished after, after, the revolution, after the revolution because all of us are hoping for transitional justice once the revolution is over and that uh, there should be a process to investigate as well and that uh, you know there should be a transition adjusted where the action should be taken for the part that they had committed during the um you know that um in, during the revolution i think there should be such a justice and accountability so i also see a hand raised here as well that um, and also have a question in the chat so i would like to put these two together so i would like to i would like to first read the question sent by Komindu, yeah so that uh, so i think uh, 
uh, when when it comes to the CDM, that uh, the revolutionary forces are not uh, looking into what the people inside the military are thinking as well. That uh, I think it is important uh, that uh, you can see that uh, there are also some officers of the rank of five who do not join the CDM, but they still wait and see the situation uh, how well it done. Also, there are also those who are do the CDM and they do not join the revolutionary forces. They are just you know hiding in plain sight in the community as well. How do you see them? This is a question for Protuso. And next is that what about the um so the KNLE um the KNLE and that uh, and also the military the KNU military wing KNLE as well as and that um, and that a military leadership of the KNU hasn't really spoken out on the issue of the CDM factors and how do you see that? Thank you for the question. Well, when it comes to the CDM, that we. Uh, our policy for the CDM is that, uh, as Spring had explained, uh, that uh, for us, you know, that uh, they're not doing the CDM is important. Okay, they are not. They they are the fact that they are not CDM is important. What is more important are the human rights violations, and there must be transitional justice as well. And that uh, and that um, that uh, also. That that term, you know, even if they do not join the CDM, they are non CDMR. But if they don't violate the human rights, if they don't commit the crimes, and that term, you know, during that coup, um, that uh, that uh, they do not uh, work with the military leaders to to violate human rights, if they do not commit such acts, uh, although they are non CDMRs, then there is no reason to take them into take them to account for their action because everyone has a right to decide freely, and they may also be in difficult circumstances and that to join the CDM as well. And that uh, there are also those uh, soldiers who, you know, who desert or defend, but they do not do anything and they do not join the CDM and they can also be providing public service such as the healthcare CDM. Uh, that uh, there are also those who do not join the CDM, though they are non-CDM, they, they remain inside the regiment, they may remain inside their military, and yet they are also, they turn informant, they give information to the democratic Forces. There are such people too that uh, you know for the PDF for the revolutionary forces, or they do the EROs, and that uh, we receive uh, such information from there. They they are still inside the military. They are even they we have a lot of informants coming from different from all walks of life, including the military. So so what what do you mean by the joining the CDM? I think it will be important to have a clear definition of what do we mean by CDM that uh, you know are you the, uh, is a person a cdm or a non cdm it's in reality can be very difficult to make it such a determination you know that uh, often we the information we receive is that inside the military too that some of the officers they're sharing information with us their information their military operation information like if they you know we don't have a like a bomb um, they, you know we don't have airstrike going on that we know that there will be maybe sometimes we get like 10 hours something like one day in advance or six hours advance uh, there will be bombing inside there, there will be bombing in a particular area there will be fighter jets and they share the information with us so the people can be evacuated so that's important and that's information coming from inside the military and they are not cdmr so how do we define what is a cdm that how do we you know that uh, make a careful distinction as to the cdmr and non cdmr it will be a very difficult uh, determination to make i think it is important uh, that uh, those uh, authority concerns authority will need to you know make a distinction as well if you're staying inside the military like the watermelons for example you know if you are the watermelon if you stay inside the military but you support the democratic movement and you help any way you can then it also depends on how what their performance is and to what extent have they been able to contribute to the revolution that also is a point we need to take into consideration and that term uh, so, and that uh, as for the KNLE or the military wing of the KNU and that uh, KNL leadership, it's in terms of uh, leadership, KNU, Korean National Union, has been now uh, in, this, in this revolution for that for a long time that, uh, you know, we, we have been in the revolution for many, many, many years. We, it is something all of us cannot deny that KNU has been in revolution for a long, long time. And that uh, I'm sure if you have learned about the history, you will know about it as per how long the KNU has been in revolution. That, uh, you know, for us, uh, the priority is the public safety. 
because we have to think about the people and that uh, as well and that um, so i think uh, it is important uh, uh, that um, that uh, it will. I think we are also doing that. Our tactics and strategies ensuring there is a safety of the population as well. Those so within KNU and Kennelly, we have uh, there is uh, both a political as well as other military consideration in our strategies and tactics. So we the two because for us the goal is to achieve their political goals. Fighting war and waging battles is important, but. Uh, we our focus is on the political objectives we are not we are not just thinking about fighting a battle we are not just thinking about winning battles we are thinking about winning the war because if you focus on the battles and if we cannot win the war then it will be problematic as well so for us it's not about the battle it's the winning the war which is more important so how do we which war is also important it will also be we have to take consideration about the public safety public uh, the uh, security we also need to think about the people because the people need to survive as well so in based on that we decided on the strategy so how that will be this how this military strategy will support and contribute to the political struggle so what kind of impacts are there politically socially so that's something we have to take and decide so these are part of our consideration this is our part of our discussion and dialogue and this is what we are also implementing as well when it comes to military I and mean, of course i'm sure you will understand that we cannot talk about the military or the warfare online like this in a public space and that and also when we are when we are facing an enemy which has the limited um limited resources or that uh, who have access to their air power for example we can of course announce publicly but uh, it's not that kennelly is not doing anything that's not true and also what has kennelly done i think is also something you'll need to if you research on what we are what we are doing what kennelly is then you have a better understanding of what we have been doing thank you bro for the response and that i'm also my connection is not also very stable so sorry about that and that um, i'd like to uh, to um, apologize for the inconvenience cause with my internet stability i would like to invite m8086 um, you have raised your hand so please go ahead so I'm a student attending federal school. So I think the, when you talk about the CDM and non-CDM, I think it is uh, so that we, should we be treating them equally, or you know should we be you know treating them differently? Well, the non well the CD well the non-CDM whether you know CDM must get better opportunities than or better rights than the non-CDM must or that as well. So I would like to know about it as well. Well, your questions about the CDM non-DM is not directly uh, connected to today's topic, and non-CDM can be also be brought as well so that uh, i think padu also talk a little about the transitional justice as well so you are also working on the transition justice so can to so can you also respond to this question about the cdmas and non-cdmas thank you for that question um that i did mention briefly about the cdm and non-cdms in reality it's very hard to distinguish who the cdm and non-cdms let me give you an example like i just have like i have just mentioned so if you look at it, uh, you know, if you look at it, and um, you know, generally speaking, oh, the, this person is non CDM. But if you know, if you if you look deeply, and these people, they may be non CDM apparently, but they are doing what they are doing is that uh, they are not. They become. Um, they may be obstacles. They may be major challenges to the military. And if they are doing like that, although they stay non CDM, then it makes it harder to make a, just a call to say, oh, this person is CDM or this person is non CDM. So sometimes it's not superficial. It has it has to go deeper into that. And once the changes happen, once the system has changed, then it will be will be able to you know think make things like okay, who's been dealing with who and how they have been working with. Who and that will be more apparent because right now, for some reason, such information will not be available. As well. We are not very clear and say, okay, you are not CDM, so that makes you not CDM. That makes you a collaborator to the SAC. Then we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, just punish them for that. Uh, you know, if we without 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 
looking deeply, I think it will be um, it will have uh, it will be bad for the revolution too, because these people could be our own people as well. And if we just go, you know, if we work, if we were to, um, you know, just make a rash decision, then it will be much. There will be much regret later. So rather than distinguishing CDM or the non CDM non CDM right now, I think it is important to look at whether there are who who are the people, who are the civil servants, or who are the actors who are collaborating with the military, who are banning villages, who are, you know, uh, that are, you know, making, uh, uh, you know, helping the military to arrest innocent civilians and torture them, who are supporting the military in their human rights violations. If they are not doing that, then these, these people, there should be a proper vetting process once the revolution is over, then we'll be able to make a decision whether they are innocent, not only that they are innocent, not only they are not to be blamed of the, um, that human rights violation, in addition to not violating any human rights, they ha may have uh, contributed significantly to the fall of the SAC. They could have been key people who have been uh, supporting the revolution in different ways. They could be the such actor too. So it, can, it is important to keep an open mind and think about that because one day, the so-called non-CDMers that, um, that uh, might might be might be the one those who are really collaborating with the, the nazi if they are collaborating with the military then they will be there will be need to be have a verification there will need to be a political purge or the you know the criminal purge that will have to come along with the along with the transitional justice of course they have to we have to clean the system it will be right if we were to talk about now it will be too early but there, there is the, in terms of policy there if there are like no human rights violations if they are not collaborating with the military for self-interest or for for the for the personal gain of that then if they those uh that then uh, the the issue of whether they should be they should be um they should be um you know punished for being CDM, that's something we have to be careful about. Thank you, Pedro, for the point you have raised. And that's these are indeed uh, issues we need to think a lot as well because when we do uh when we are doing the trying to change when we mobilize the people to change their ideology I think it is important to that's what to think about as well those who change the mindset or the factors but there are also we need to mobilize who still might not be able to openly change to our side as well and that at the same time according to the transitional justice one I think it is also important to to consider all these issues very right as well and that uh, as Padu have explained that uh, people are very um, people are very angry with the military people hate the military so they may have strong sentiments that is understandable but I think it is important that we should not be we are trying to focus not it's, it's not the it's not the person but the system so we are trying to change the system I think it is important to focus on getting what you made and that's part of the mobilization and support that we needed as well thank you for the answer as well as on the uh, participating in our discussion I think we have addressed all the questions, so we'd like to wrap up um, this um, digital session. So as a wrap up, I would like to, um, you know, I will be uh, summarizing uh, today's uh, discussion as well as on the, we'll be summarizing, we'll be calling on our speakers also to give recommendations as well. So I would like to invite Padu, uh, Padu uh, to, uh, to, for the wrap up session. So in the, do you, Anything you want to add to the discussion after responding to the questions as well as on the points that you have discussed and what will also be uh, when it comes to the defection mobilization as well as on the support for the defectors, what kind of recommendations you want to give to the revolutionary forces and what kind of engagement you think should there be to in, in the matter of defectors? <laughs> We are changing the system. In changing the system, it's very important that we don't fall in the trap of that bad system. So, as I mentioned, we are changing the wrong system. We are changing the uh, human rights violating system. We are changing the uh, authoritarian system. So we are changing the system. We as a system changer should not be 
the victim of the system. We should not fall in the trap of the bad system itself. We should not be that bad system itself. We are now um, changing the system. We are not um, revenging the people. So in this revolution, we need to came up with the politically impacted um, strategy. We need to consider the future of the people. We need to think of the people in whatever we are doing. In this revolution, we may play our own role in various ways, but whatever we do, it is for the system change. We are not targeting any individual in here. So this is something that we have to uh, be mindful about. Now we are talking about military dictatorship. The military dictatorship shall never be ended easily. It will never be ended easily. We need people's solidarity to, to eliminate it. The military dictators that we are confronting are now facing the hate and anger of a whole public. So the whole public anger, it's what the military is facing now. This alone, it's the factor that the military will be dissolved. The military leaders do not dare to show their face to the public. Their family members do not dare to live within the civilized community. So they are depressing. Their morality is extremely low. We as a public should be in solidarity. On the other hand, we should not blame each other. We should not have suspicion on ourselves. With all sort of suspicion, we should not kill each other. At some point, at some day, regardless of the military, regardless of the ethnic revolutionary organization, if any of these did anything recklessly, carelessly, then your action will be accountable for what you are doing. I want already this message. You need to take accountability and responsibility whatever you did. If you are military or if you are the ethnic revolution, I'm, I'm sorry, if you are the revolutionary organization or whoever you are, we are now talking about unjust system. This unjust system is not to be supported, not to be assisted. So the unjust system is to be left out. And in order to leave the unjust system, you have to join with the righteousness. Joining the righteousness means leaving the military. So all the organizations, people, revolutionary organizations, ethnic organization, ethnic revolutionary organizations, everyone who are not the military, it's opening their heart to embrace you. So the State Administration Council, it's to be left whatever they are doing 
it's the exact war crimes. Whatever they do, it's the strategy for war crime, the tactics for the war crime. Everyone who is part of the war criminals will be made accountable and responsible for their conduct of their war crime. This is the time that you stop such war criminal activities and join with the people with this revolution. This is something I would like to say to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Bado So Now I would like to invite Miss Spring, if you have any uh, message, advice, to everyone. Now we live in the um, violent er, violence era. So I kind of wonder what can public do to make less bloodshed? What would be your advice for this? Thank you. Well, what we can do? Well, people from the very beginning up to now are engaging with their utmost capacity in this revolution. In the um, peaceful demonstration period, they um, peacefully ask the soldier and the policeman to do the defection. And once the um, defectors are there, the people help them. Uh, but this revolution um, required us to defend ourselves, to uh, eliminate the military. So that's why there is um, struggle um, formed in this revolution as it is very much needed. Nevertheless, uh, please help by providing information. Please help by linking up. Please help by referring the soldiers who is about to defect. And even, I mean, there are soldiers who want to defect, but they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't know all the information. So public can play a very important role in helping the potential defectors by just by pro providing information of the defection program it's something that is very critical that is my message to the public now the soldiers the soldiers really know who is going to be the winning horse so you really need to know and you already know which side that you should join and another particular message to my public is that please do not buy any of the products that is made by the military business empire and we also observe that just very recently the whole military units defect so um, there are over 300 soldiers um, contacting our organization to do the defense these days so what i'm trying to say is that yes we hate the military dictators yes we hate the military uh, but you have to differentiate your feeling towards the military with the soldiers who want to leave the military 
and please help the soldiers who want to defect. And there are also uh, all sort of propaganda by the military towards the soldiers. Please do not believe them. And please just join the public, the people defend forces and ethnic organization. They are helping the defectors to live, to enjoy the human rights, to reintegrate with their family, to restore their human dignity. So this is the last hope that we all can survive. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Go Nang Yu. Go Nang Yu, if you have any additional points, please. Um, uh, 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 and another thing that I would like to ask you is that what kind of suggestion that you would like to give to everyone, including the international community, in this revolution? Thank you. The people who continuously um, stand for the powerful defection dynamic. So this is something that the people go um, set at its policy from the very beginning. Now, we start seeing the defections by the troops, by the whole units. So this is the major shift in this revolution. And this is the biggest attack on the military to be dissolved. And people are now welcoming such kind of defection. And at the same time, the people should um, um, make aware that the, the people should motivate, the people should encourage, and the people should encourage the soldiers to do the defection. The military institution it's gradually falling down, actually. So this dynamic, revolutionary forces <coughs> needs to be in solidarity to completely get rid of the military once and for all, the dictatorship once and for all. We can be different, we can and be disagreement, uh, but in this revolution, we need to be on the same page in getting rid of the military hunters. We need to say that. I would like to say that there is a moment in life that you need to make a difficult decision. Even if this is going to be the difficult decision, but if this is the right one, then you should be brave enough to make such kind of bad decision, uh, sorry, uh, 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 difficult decision. This is my message to the military. Please drop your arms. Please leave the military. Please join with the public. So please be brave to make decision. Don't be hesitate. Don't be confused. Don't be frustrated. Please join with your nearest ethnic revolutionary organization so that you and your integrity and dignity would be restored. Let's stand up. Let's raise and let's make your brave decision for your new 
Can't do right Bad future. Thank you. With this, I would like to see that this is the end of our conversation with the topic, with the title, let's raise, let's stand up, let's decide for our new future. So we have discussed with our various perspective. Thank you very much to the speakers, to the audience. Next week, we will have 